Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we slide on next to Off the Press, uh, where we review the front pages of uh, major dailies. And of course, uh, we review that with an analyst. Uh, this morning, we have J.D. Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, joining us. Good morning to you, J.J. Good morning, Justin. Thank you. All right, let us now let us just start um, with some um, the Nation newspaper this morning and the making front page. Uh, ACF leaders, uh, South should stop issuing threats over zoning. That's the lead story on the Nation newspaper uh, with um, the writer there. It's President or nothing, says Ohanese. Gone are the days where Northerners felt blackmailed and intimidated by threats of restructuring succession or secession, breakup or breakdown of Nigeria. Above the masthead, another story making the rounds on the nation newspaper. OPEC raises Nigeria's production quota uh, by 19,000 mega uh, PD. Uh, Abuja Kaduna train service set to resume. No NIN, uh, no NIN, no ticket. Payment of helicopter landing fee begins on Monday. Senator Bashiru leads Oyetola's re election campaign. Other stories on the nation newspaper this morning Nigeria, US others lead in gas flaring, says World Bank report. APC presidential form 17 aspirants so far still counting. All right, uh, hearing in consumers' uh, suit against multi-choice suffers setback. Those are all of the stories on the Nation newspaper. Quickly, we'll move on next to the Punch newspaper. Megan Banner headline this morning, 2023 consensus plan on settles APC. Protesters warn against imposition. With several writers uh, leading that particular story, aspirants number heats uh, 30 12 peak forms are also on fold six point agenda. Pro Tinubu Group wants NWC VP supporters target ticket via consensus. Zoning, you have no monopoly of threat. ACF replies sadness. Akiri Dolu. Other stories federal government to take over Ebony Medical Sciences Varsity, says Buhari. Customs intercept 12 trucks of imported poisonous rice. Now, Lebanese uh, detained for crushing Lagos woman victim undergoes seven hour surgery. Rights violators can't get asylum, UK tells IPOB others. Uh, Lassa fever kills uh, 140 NCDC alerts health workers. Forex remittances crashed by 48% amidst dollar shortage that's attributed to the Central Bank of Nigeria. Also above the masthead of the Punch newspaper, subscribers reject 40% tariff hike, vow to oppose telcos. Nigeria, nine orders account for 75% global glass flaring, flaring, that's according to the World Bank. Tinubu behind Songwolu GAC insists that controversy surrounds second term bid. Above that one, federal government hikes electricity tariff. Consumers condemn past sector privatization. And those are the main stories on the front page of the Punch newspaper. We'll move on next to the Nigerian Tribune. Why APC power brokers plot to jettison zoning? Push for Northern candidate gathers momentum. South has ruled for 13 years in the Fourth Republic ACF. No Igbo politician should run as vice president candidate, candidate in 2023. Ohanese. Amosun declares presidential ambition. Oshibajo, Namani, Bakari pick nomination forms. NERC approves new electricity tariff. COVID-19 killed almost 15 million people in two years. That's according to the World Health Organization. 15% levy. Again, clearing agents abandoned vehicles at Tinken. Man bags death sentence for killing a traditional ruler in Ekiti State. No going back on June 3 deadline. INEC reminds political parties. 
and also uh, making front page on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. As to strike, Nigerians express anger as vice chancellor's wife's plan to attend course in Turkey. PDP adjusts election timetable, shifts neck meeting. LG Congresses to hold May the 10th. Suspense over APC Southwest leaders meeting with Tinubu Oshibajo, others. Customs seized 7,250 bags of poisonous rice imported from India. Those are the main stories on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. And finally, let's take a look at the Daily Independent newspaper. Electricity tariffs seems to be uh, taking front burn across uh, major newspapers this morning. Our Daily Independent aptly captions it this way. Consumers kick as NERC OK's tariff increase for this cause. ICPC boss backs non-conviction-based asset recovery in fight against corruption. I've not endorsed any aspirant in Delta Okoa. Admit some persons attempted to hijack delegates' uh, list. Southwest ABC leaders meeting, ex-governors alleged bias call for postponement. Above the masthead 2023, Ohanese rules out vice presidential slot for Southeasterners. Fund education signed our agreement to preserve Nigeria's future. Asu tells Buhari, Sanu, Nasser resumed talks with federal government over strike. On the red strip just below the paper, 2023 presidency, Oshiba Joe Bakari finally peak forms. And those are the main stories uh, on the Daily Independent. Let's bring on G.D. Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigeria Institute of Journalism. Thanks for joining us again, J.J. Good morning, and good morning, sir. I hope you're Oh, you're good. Yes, I'm good. Yes, I am. So, JJ, let's just uh, talk. Uh, there's several issues to discuss on the front pages of this paper. But let's start with the Daily Independent. And their lead story uh, this morning is um, consumers uh, kick as neck OK's tariff increase for this cause. What is your reaction to that? Well, um, it's too sad that within, within one year, but let me say 18 months, they will make an attempt to increase the tariff three times. And it's unfortunate that we have a regulatory board that should do the work of the nation, but are not doing the work. I don't know whether the, the, the minimum wage, the income of an average Nigerian, has increased over the last 18 months. They're just coming out of the pandemic, and everybody's giving an excuse that the, the cost of running business is high, the cost of living to it is high. You want to add additional budget. And I've said it, it's because those we call regulators are not regulators, they are just beneficiaries of these services. Who are amongst the senators, the House of Rep members, or those <coughs> top civil servants and workers in Ministry of Power, in NERC, that are paying the electricity tariff. They don't pay. They enjoy these aspects of their offices. That's the reason why the National Assembly, led by the Senate President and the courts in Nigeria, representing the judiciary, will <coughs> make a pronouncement with respect to DSTV, not increasing their tariff, but DSTV will go ahead to increase their tariff. The airline operators wants to increase their tariff. Everybody, and this body, Finally, comes on, on, on the citizen, and we see democracy is coming up by the people and for the people. I cannot imagine if, for example, in my community, um, we have a town hall meeting with whoever is providing us with electricity, and the person will have the function to come to us three times within 18 months to tell us that it's going to increase the tariff, and then we will be the, the action of people there. So the people who have elected to represent us, they are actually not representing us. They are just protecting the interest and they are giving an opportunity to whoever is running business to respect us. Those in business want to maximize profit, no doubt about that. Done. However, those that we have put in place as regulators, elected and appointed, must understand that they are representing the people. They must protect the interest of the people. So that's why big DSCB can get away with it. That's why this coast can get it. And that's why the telecom sector, if this 
my grade, to my recharge card. Or, or, or any of the other rep members. Or, these are some of the facts. All right, JJ, all right, JJ, if I have to butt in um, as regards um, the issue of um, the telecoms, uh, just yesterday it was reported all over the news that they are increasing the tariffs and call rates and SMS charges by 40%. They are alleging high cost of diesel and other operational costs, as well as uh, the various insecurity challenges, which um, have actually bedeviled the operations and their, you know, their um, base stations. Would you really say that um, they are in order if they are actually reviewing their costs as a result of this uh, various uh, high cost of um, production. Now, just in the high cost of production, just that when they were making tremendous profit, what did they give back to Nigeria's society? Like I told everybody operating in business, just look at their, just look at their bottom line, just look at their return on investment, look at the profit they, they, they declare every year, every year prior to this year that they have a major disruption, and everybody is just come. So if those factors are, are, are taken in, into consideration, so it should be it should be the consumer that should bear the entire problem. There is a man thing that says the consumer is the king, but not in Nigeria because there are no consumer interest group. Those that you have elected, those that are in Ministry of Communication, those in Nigeria Communication Council, those in 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 Nigeria Electric Electricity Regulatory Regulatory. Commission. But the, all of them, they, 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 they are not representing our, they are not representing our interests. What type of, what type of excuse? Now, if you are operating in the telecom sector, and you know the power sector is a major subsector, that why have they not made the investment in the power sector? Why have they not made the investment in the oil and gas sector? Why have they not contribute money to federal government to support this security issue? Nigeria? I recall it because the, when armed robbery was was in major menace. All the major companies operating in Lagos come up and come up with the Lagos Security Fund. So what have these people done in terms of their social responsibility, in terms of, in terms of their philanthropic activities, in terms of assisting and helping government to provide leverage for other other sectors that are that are affecting that are that are affecting their, their, their business. All right. Otherwise, what they want to do is to exploit Nigeria. And it's unfortunate. I've said it with the time, if only Nigerians can have a boycott. I said, now you know what? We are not going to use the form. We are going to have a boycott for 24 or 72 hours. Then they have a clear understanding. All right, and thank you, Jindy Johnson, for that particular comment. Let's stay with the Daily Independent. There are other stories I would love uh, for us to review before we move on to other papers. Uh, Southwest APC leaders meeting. The ex-governors are alleging bias and call. Uh, they are calling for postponement. Uh, from what we hear, the Vice President, um, uh, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, may not be attending. Jindy. Well, you are calling the meeting. The meeting is called by Chief Akonde and Olusha Monshova. They were calling the meeting and not putting the meeting in the Lord's house. And they did not cover the meeting before people declare their aspiration and before aspirant speaks nomination form. You are calling the meeting after a lot of presidential candidates have shown their aspiration and they have also picked the nomination form. That's and then you do not look for a neutral venue. You are looking for, if you have any meeting in Lagos House, he's talking about pure politics. I'm not a politician. I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher. Now, you are putting the meeting in Lagos House. And then one of the principal aspirants is the godfather of Lagos State. So, who we'll come to that meeting? If you are playing politics, you know the type of meeting they are calling. Nobody, if, if, I, if I'm a consultant or, or, or a member of any of the aspirant um, team, I will tell him not to attend. Because he's working to the answer. They will come to that meeting and they will say, okay, we are advised all of you, we have reached an agreement, we have picked this person as our consensus candidate for the South Coast. They are fooling themselves. Sorry. So, do they, do you, you think the issue is actually uh, the, that of. Um, Location, uh, Lagos. Well, it's one the location. You are not being strategic about picking the venue. One the location. Two the convenience of the meeting. It's, it's clear. 
is eminently clear that Chief Akonde and Chief Oluja Pepe of Choba of North Street, Ashwani Kuala Medinu, is clear. Everybody can see that. You can't call for a meeting where, in a, you can't call for a meeting, a meeting where the people that are calling for the meeting have shown some level of bias. Mm. What type of meeting are you calling for? There's no way Oshiba you will attend, they attend that meeting. You didn't put the meeting in Abuja. You didn't put it in 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 in, in the Ikiti State, Ikiti State government government. You put it in Lagos House. Whereas the government of Lagos State has openly shown its preference for a presidential aspirant. That's not a meeting. That's it is 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 the meeting that is called to do what we call you work you work. Or you know the answer from the beginning of setting the question. So you just get just go to the answer which we call Ururu when we should do mathematics in primary school. We call it Ururu to the answer. You want to do to, to, to the nomination. No? So that's why they are thinking again. That's why like they will not because the moment you attend such meeting, if you understand, if at least people are using politics one oh one. If you play politics at the grassroots level and they invite you for meeting, what do you think come out of it? Now, if you recall two days ago, in Can in Cardinal State, it was said that it was reported that uh, Rufa has picked Senator Ubasoni as his successor. And they said at the meeting, after three hours extensive deliberation, <laughs> and there was this thing going all around that it is it is his chief of staff and former commissioner for two terms that they wanted to use before. Um, that they would find, and then they had this meeting, and then at that meeting, it was a three hour meeting, and the president, uh, then the governor, Matuna Sia, would find, allegedly asked Senator Oba suddenly to pick the nomination form for, for the governor, and then the, the, the quote unquote anointed, previously anointed candidate was asked to pick the nomination form for the senatorial seat. So it was allocated, they allocated the position at right. that three hour investment. So everyone that has the aspiration had to bear his aspiration. And one in one of the reports, someone said we have to follow the will of the of, of, of the Malam because the Malam is the leader and the will of the leader is the will of Allah. So this this one they are calling, they want to ask everybody to come and step down. All right. Step down for, for, for. So why would you guys wait? Why can't they go? Just imagine if they are taking the the the, the, the meeting to Asuro and look for one of the meeting rooms in Asuro. And it's the vice president who use his own office too. So, okay, like, don't worry, I'll provide you where we we'll have this discussion and then we'll have this meeting. All right, Jude Johnson. Let us uh, move on. Let's leave um, the APC Southwestern meeting for one moment. The APC is still in the news uh, on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Why APC power brokers plot to jettison zoning? It's as though we've not heard uh, the last of this uh, issue of zoning. There's some writers there which are very interesting. Push for northern candidate gathers momentum. South has ruled for 13 years in the Fourth Republic. That's according to the Ira Consultative Forum. Let's get your reaction. This issue of uh, zone and jettison it, uh, the push for Southeast and South South Presidency. What are your thoughts, really, on this particular issue? Well, it's, it's this, this we make the plan and the call for, for a structure to be stronger. Whatever, whatever the outcome of 2023 elections, Nigeria will not be the same again. Whatever the outcome of 2023 election, because it's evidently clear. And I wish that you we can join me in this conversation. Because I recall our appearance on the sister station program with Joe in the in the in the in the in the move towards 2019 election. And his argument was that oh they should allow Bari to continue. They should do this that because the power will come to the side. I asked him this question, which I'm saying now. I don't know whether when I'm saying it, politicians don't see. They are they are blinded by blinded by their solution. And I told him that I said who, who said power is coming to the south? That is not written in the 1999 constitution. By what I've seen of the political landscape, that the northern political elite will not want power to come to the south. That is I can put my money on it, that PDP will present the presidential candidate in 2023. That's towards 2019 election. That they will present, and then you will see a movement from APC to PDP, so from the north supporting the PDP president. They are saying just like you had the movement in 2015, in 2014, when 
any movement from the north of PDP to APC, so that APC will retain the power in the north. So it is very clear, and it is very. And I love this game. The reason why I love it is that it will come clearer to the political class. I have told my kid and kid that call themselves the progressive in the south, in the southwest, for example, that they are deceiving themselves if they say APC is a progressive party. I told them. APC represent the conservative ideology of the Nigerian political class. And I asked them then in 20, 2015, when they came to power, that I'm looking forward to them ensuring that 37 SCK in big one at least get in the future of the 1999 constitution as amended. I'm looking forward to them doing the structuring, which they all promised to do. They, they all have their tail in, in between their legs. Even their leader does not even have does not even have a say within the party that they joined the F2. The F2 we have we we seen the emergence of the PM on the whether in PDP or in APC, whereby people for selfish interest wants to retain power within the section of this one. And I'm saying the figures are there. The figures are there. The South and the North Central can decide to go in Doom and leave the Northeast and Northwest and they retain the president. All right, uh, Gide Jensen. <laughs> all right, uh, Gide Jensen. In the wake of all of this, uh, you know, the APC and of course uh, trying to jettison um, zoning, the Ohanese and Igbo has come out to say, or as have actually asked, uh, you know, the Igbo politicians not to accept the slots or from vice and presidency. How do you see all of this playing out in the mathematics and of course in the game of numbers as the politicians do? Well, it's not for one reason to say nobody should accept. But it's for them to come up with a collective strategy. What's stopping all the southern? For example, I've said it that we have been unfair but not allowing the Southeast to have a shot on the presidents. I've said it. If we use this turn by turn principle and the principle of rotational presidency between the North and the South, and then if the Southwest had had a shot of eight years, it's unfair. It's injustice. In actual sense, for anybody to aspire to become a president in APC, that's the truth from the Southwest. That's, that's nothing, nothing but, but the truth. Those who should have first shot will be the Southeast. And then followed by the South South. In actual sense, not even a single person should pick um, the presidential nomination from. And that's why you have not seen. And that's why um, it's not dominant in, in, in PDP. But in APC, you have them declaring left, right, and center. We are, what you accuse the North of doing is what the South is going to do from the southern part of this country. It's unethical, it's unfair, it's, it's, it's unwholesome. So, as far as one is is concerned, um, but they say they could, did not speak about this year, they did not speak about social, cultural issues and political issues affecting, they are talking about vice presidents. When someone has said the nomination, are they going to kill the person? The moment they give the nomination to, to, to either their third or fourth or fifth level, the moment they give their nomination to them, what, what would they do to the person? They would provide the person with security, they can't get, they can't get access. As a, the principle of politics that we do in Nigeria is divided down. And that's what's going to happen. So they will, all their threats will lead, will lead to nothing. We lead to nothing. That's just that's all it is. But on the principle of fairness, equity, and justice, it should be the southwest, southeast rather. That should be the, the contest between the southeast and the south south. The north should not even, the, the argument of the north saying that oh the southwest has as has been the president. Then we should go to military regime and talk about the number of years. That the North is just, I don't know to those that study that's what you will decide. The number of years that you have military and state from the North, we should go to that and analyze that. And then we go to when we have the first president. The first president we have in this nation was Shehu Shagan, the executive president was Shehu Shagan. He ruled for four years. So you add that to the North too. You don't limit it, you don't, you don't limit it to. to to, to, to 1999 today, that's, that's applying the principle of reductionism. So we won't, we won't take that for, for, from anybody. And then, if, if that's the argument, then let everybody pay to your debt owe his Because every aspect of our national life 
is controlled by some certain sectional, sectional group and sectional interest. And the figures are there. The figures are there. You don't need you don't need two regions to become the president. All you need to do is want to for the political zone to become the president. And that's it. And who says the North is united? Who says? All right. Is, All right, uh, Jude Johnson, uh, let's move on to the Punch newspaper. Just yesterday, uh, the media was awash uh, with news. Uh, uh, some have you know, described it as fake news of uh, uh, the national leader of the APC, that's the former governor of Lagos State, Ashwaju um, Ahmed Bola Tinubu, you know, not supporting the second um, term ambition of uh, you know, the incumbent governor, that's uh, Babaji De Sonwolo. But uh, the punch uh, just captured it this way. Uh, Tinubu uh, behind Sonwolo, GAC insists as controversy surrounds second term bid. Jide, your um, comment. I, I can't hear you. You are not on the move. All right. I was, I was, ta I was talking. GAC releasing a statement on the second term of GD Sonwolo's Okay, let me let me take that again. Ambition. Let me take that again. Tinubu. Hello. Okay, you, can you hear me, uh, Jude? Can you hear me, Jude? Well, let me just let me just talk on that one. In Lagos State, they have what is called the Governor Advisory Council, and those that can decide those that will run for presidency, uh, for Governor of Lagos State, whether they are incumbent or not incumbent, on the DGSP meeting, are not elected body, are not democratic body, a body that does not even have. Is still within the APC. It's a body outside of the APC structure, and that body can decide who becomes the governor of Lagos State. That shows you the undemocratic nature of how they run their affairs in Lagos State. Now, so if they, and then when you translate that to the national life, these same set of people will be complaining. So if you have the governor advisory committee in Lagos deciding who becomes the governor of, of Lagos State. And so you have the presidential advisory committee in Nigeria for those who decide who becomes the president. So when the presidential advisory committee, when they sit and they say you can't run or you can't run, all right, I will try and reconnect uh, with GD Johnson, who seems to be having an audio. Uh uh, issue uh, with uh, connecting with him. Uh, there are other stories that I would need to talk about. Uh, for instance, uh, the issue of um, you know poisonous um, um, rice and being imported to the country from India. All of that are actually also making headlines um, across some various um, newspapers this morning. You know there are other interesting stories on the Punch uh, newspaper. For instance, uh, Nigeria nine others account for 75% global glass or gas flaring. All right, uh, Jide, do we have you back? Yeah, I, I, can you hear me, Justin? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, please. Okay. So, like I said, if there is GST in the lost state, there is PAC in Abuja, the Presidential Advisory Committee, that decided who becomes. And I can tell you the members of the Presidential Advisory Committee. One, one is, one, two are in Mina, one is in Abuja, one is from Taraba, and then the principal one, as I talk now, is sitting in Asura. So, if, if, if you have the GSC in Lagos, you have the peace in Abuja too as well. So, the people in Lagos should, not, should stop complaining, and their, and their aides should stop complaining. When they want to do consensus arrangement in, 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 in Abuja, because in Lagos State, they have always done consensus arrangement from GSC, an unelected, undemocratic one that was instituted that has no, that has no constitutional bearing. That from the APC power structure constitution or from the governance structure in, in, in Lagos State, but the point that was instituted to truncate um, the ambitions of people that have aspirations to become governors in, in Lagos and to, and to go to the, the, the directives of the godfather of Lagos State politics. So, um, but our Lagosians are just supposed to just uh, fold their arms and keep on just watch is, things. Is good. All right, so but then what the, what should the electorate be doing there? Since you have rightly and aptly said that um, that particular process is undemocratic, should they just uh, sit and watch um, Akimbo as uh, things are just um, decided for them? Well, uh, you see, you see, what we have witnessed, I've said it over time, Justin, 
In this fourth republic, power does not belong to the people. Because the structure of the party system, the party system are controlled by the money bags. And the money bags dictate what happens at the party. Now there is no truly internal democracy within the parties. They just write the names of the ex school. You see the way they go about 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 picking the the, 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 the ex schools of, of, of the various political parties, how they do their their internal internal conventions. You will see that there's no democracy in it. So they, they dictate the truth. That's why in, that's why in in, 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 in Cardinal State Every five will determine who becomes the successor. That's why in Lagos State, um, um, some people will see that God themselves GC. I will tell people that can aspire and people that cannot, that cannot aspire. I've had friends, I've had people that have won primaries and that they, their name have been substituted from the primaries which they won. The records are there. It's just that we have some measure of facility when it comes to investigating journalism, when it comes to the political landscape. In, 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 in Nigeria, the, 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 the stories are there, they are commonplace stories on the street, on how, on how the parties are run, on how the parties are, are, are structured with respect to internal, internal democracy within the party. So if you control, if you control the delegates, if you control the ESCO, you write fictitious things on the ESCO. On the day of the election, you just put the names of your cronies and you tell your cronies what they need to go and do. In the past, power belongs to the draft. They say politics is local. Politics is not local again. Politics is either in Bodilon or is either in Asura or in every in all the state government government houses. In the past, it used to be the people that have control over the affairs of the party. Now it is either the governor or the former governor that has control over the political political, right. political structure of the party. And that's something I've been missing. That's the unfortunate thing about this present democratic dispensation. People don't win election, representative are not selected on the basis of their Applied. They are imposed. They are imposed on people. Okay. They are imposed. You see, you see, you could see that somebody could do could do twenty years political career in Lagos. I'm talking about the senator that represented Lagos West Senatorial District for eight years. He was House of Assembly members for eight years, and then he was House of Rep member for eight years. And the person who will me and will me move from Lagos West to Ogun West. To represent Ogun West as a senator elect, to represent Ogun as a senator after doing 20 years mm. of political career in Lagos, now it's now shifting place. Except the people in that place, they don't have it. If truly you have a democratic structure that is not based on imposition, that the people in that community, I can't imagine. 10 or 20 people of my nature in that community, and then you have that past coming, and power belongs to them, they will have such, such nonsense. All right, uh, Judy Johnson, uh, let's uh, take uh, one more story from the punch and see if we can also touch on the nation. Uh, there's this disturbing story. I don't know where we are headed. Uh, customs intercept 12 trucks of imported poisonous rice. You will see just nothing now on it. Nowhere to roll. The poisonous rice, they will seize it and nothing will come. Just uh, poisonous. Is the thing you will need to ask is just like we have problem with the disco, those regulating the disco, those regulating <laughs> the telcos, those regulating TST and the rest of them. Just like we have problem with this, also we have problems with those that are uh, the, those that are in charge of allowing goods and services to come into Nigeria. The custom, the custom and there's this department in ministry, ministry of Agric that used to work with customs and with respect to food. So we just we just we just hear the story like this and then we hear the story. Not a single staff of the regulatory body or not a single staff or not a single person that is responsible for this will either be arrested or prosecuted or dismissed or discipline, and I'm giving you different types of measures you could use to deal with, with the issue. Then we cross over that issue, and then we continue as business as 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 as, as usual. So in Nigeria, there are no consequences for your action. You can get away with it, and that's why the governor will drive against the traffic. That's why the, the police, the police that are meant to maintain law and order, will be driving one way with their vehicle because because they are. So it's a lawless society where. 
There is no respect for decency. There is no respect for rule of law, and people don't face consequences for their action. And that's why we are found ourselves where we are found ourselves. We are no respecter of principles, and if we don't respect principles, there can never be any meaningful growth. Let us not change the personnel of governance. We've been changing the personnel of governance. What has been our experience? Rather than for our experience to improve, our experience gets worse and worse by the day. Why? Because we don't respect principles. We always believe that personalities will solve our problems. And then we don't even vote for the right candidate because the process has been compromised and has been hijacked by, by, <coughs> by, the, by, by the money bags who dictates what happens within the, within the, the political within their political political party. You saw what happened with the EDT um, youth leader that was on to Lagos State where one of the aspirants was crying on national or at the international state because they, they, they that's the that's the approach the political class. That's what they do in the secret. You know they force everybody, every one of them to step down. Willingly people are coming. What we have is autocracy and not democracy. They were coming and holding my microphone. I have stepped down. I have stepped down. Some of them shed tears. And those that were bold enough, like that lady from Cross that said, You know what? I'm not stepping down. I'm not stepping down for everybody. You are told to do the line of the leaders. So that's just what we are. Where are you Do you know how many of those rights that are in the market already that Nigerians are eating? Baba? All right. Uh, it is a sad yeah, situation. In this for Nigeria, not looking at all. You know, when they brought that thing to Oko in, 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 in the in the 90s, and that toxic, toxic, what are those, okay, like in recent times, even this year, what has happened to those that imported toxic fuel into Nigeria? Mm. The toxic fuel. That is still questionable because um, nothing has been done after all. Okay, let's, talk, let's go to the nation and newspaper, GD, as we begin to round off on this particular discourse. Uh, let's talk about uh, the Abuja Kaduna train service. Uh, from what we hear, it is set to resume, and uh, no NIN, no tickets. That's the recent development. You said what? I can't hear you. Abuja Kaduna train service. Abuja Kaduna train service sets to resume. Oh, no oh, NIN. That's another issue. Abuja, train, Abuja, Abuja, Abuja Kaduna train. Yeah. That's another issue. Mm -hmm. Right now, so, they're saying that they're set to resume. We close over people that were kidnapped. We close over people that were injured. We close over people that lost their life. Their business, business will resume as usual. What is the value of an average Nigerian life? Mm. What measures has government? Government has not given us a comprehensive explanation with respect to measures that they are, they are providing to protect the lives and properties of, of the Nigerian citizenry. And I've said it, if it's not a clear, there will have been calls for the Minister of Transportation to resign. There will have been calls for the Minister of Defense to resign. There will have been calls for the President to resign because in their failure of their duty to protect the lives and property, they swore a code. To. So I know the presidents, the ministers, the governors also are good to protect the lives and property of Nigeria. Have they lived up to the good they swore? Mm. So those that have lost their life will have lost their life. Those that are injured are permanent scar forever. And those that have not been found well. They will hope and hope that they are found because all we just want to see, like Mark Johnson said in one of his popular songs, all I want to see is that they don't even care about us. That's why the Minister of Transportation will collect nomination form for presidential election. The Minister of Education will collect nomination from the Minister of State for Education when our Swiss on strike. And the Minister of Labor and Productivity will have presidential aspiration. When ASU is on strike, and then there's no there's no end in sight to solving that that particular that particular problem. It's 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 it's, it's just a vicious cycle. And like we said, we can change personnel, but if we don't change our attitude, if we don't apply some basic principles of respect for life and property, human dignity, and um, others, then there's no need. We keep talking about what we are talking about today. We we'll talk about next year, we we'll talk about it in four years' time, when another election cycle comes around, we we'll talk about it in eight years' time, when another election cycle comes around, then we'll become, we 
living inside the clock and that keeps moving forward and coming backward, keeps moving forward and coming backward. All right, uh, I'm also a very big thank you to you, uh, Jide Johnson, for all the thoughts you have shared concerning um, the major stories uh, that are trending on the front pages of the nation's uh, newspapers. Uh, thank you so much uh, once again, Jide Johnson. You play your favorite. You play your favorite. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And you too. Ajide uh, Johnson is the chief lecturer, Nigeria Institute of uh, Journalism. That's as much as we can take on of the press. Uh, we'll take a quick break and uh, return with more. But just before we we'll let you know what's happening, uh, what happened this day in history, stay with us.